What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't. Ah! Fuck. God damn it. I thought I pressed the mute button every time. I forget to press the mute button. Ah. Oh, man. Or I didn't forget. I missed. I even know you can miss the mute button. I'm like, I feel like I'm playing Annie in League of Legends and I just drop the ball. Where's my music? Thank you. Okay, copy that. Paste that. Send. Music volume is good. Put that up here. Mute that. Paste that. Move that over here. Chat, one day I'm going to make a program that does all the shit at Stream Start for me. Jasm! Hello. Hi, holy. Hi, holy. Okay. Everything's up. Okay. Whew. We're ready. Let me bring up the uh, the old lazy foo. Wait, there it is. All right, where's my lazy foo? Where is it? Angus the boss. Hello, hello. Welcome. Sorry, it takes me whew, takes me a second to get up and run in here. What are we learning next? Oh, rotation. Right, 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 right. We're learning rotation and flipping next. Geargate, hi, hi. Welcome, welcome. Everyone feeling like an awesome possum today? Oh, I should show you guys. Uh, we broke a record on the stream. Uh, let me quickly pull up uh, history here. Where's, um... Where's my, uh... Where's my, uh, analytics? Overview. There we go. Okay, so on my analytics, um, we are going to be looking at max viewers, and for the first time ever... Hold on. Don't... Okay. Um... God damn, it's been a long time since we started streaming. Okay. So since the beginning of the stream ever, we have had an all-time record of 50 max viewers because we had a last little 12 person raid so in terms of growth on the channel yeah the last like two weeks have just been absolutely insane um yeah it's been a lot and in fact can i see average viewers i want to see how that yeah you can see over the last like little hump there in fact here let me zoom in for you that way you don't have to risk looking at the uh, wallpaper with your virgin eyes okay so, uh, close enough. Okay, so this is like the average viewership. So you can see we actually had a big spike here. This was when I started making Path of Exile videos. This this spike was actually natural. But man, this, uh, woo. Man, these programming streams sure is a hit, huh? Hot damn. And these are subscriptions. Obviously, I had a few uh, big spikes there. Also, you guys like how this is in purple? Also, follows. Holy shit, you guys are crazy about following. But yeah, it's crazy, huh? So over the course of my entire streaming career, I have averaged eight viewers. That's all right. I mean, how many times do I ever average less than five? Like for the first week and pretty much never since. Like in the dark ages, like right here, this was pretty rough. I actually thought about stopping streaming like around here before we picked up Path of Exile content and that big boom that happened. But yeah. We're going to do programming streams because holy shit, I'm good at that, I guess. Not good at programming. Don't, don't get me wrong. I ain't good at programming, but let's not get the entertaining part of it. But yeah, pretty sick. Look at those max viewers. New record. Angus, the buzz, you subscribed. Oh, thank you. You know what? Just because we're in a great mood today. Come here. All right. Come here, chat, you little bitches. Come here, you little ankle biters. There. Don't get used to it. All right. That was a compromise. All right. Where's, your, where's chat? Hold up. Chat, why are you... God, you think you would auto-reset to the top left of the stream. All right. Let's book up Visual Studio. Where are we here? Boom. Uh, boom. Okay. So there's a couple of things I learned. I... What? IntelliSense and browsing information will not be available for C++ projects because the C++ browsing database file could not be open for writing. Oh, I don't know what that is. Anyway... So let me just make sure this runs. Okay, sweet. So you may notice that since yesterday, some things have changed. Um, a lot of the colors here are off. That's kind of annoying, but um, anyway, some things have changed. Uh, this is one of them. 
So now this runs permanently without my mouse being like moving at all. See, it's running forever because somebody in the discord call in the after party was like, hey, dude, just please take it out of the while loop. And I was like, what? So we go down to the while loop that we had here and it's uh, while quit equals false do this. And my dumbass thought it had to be in there to like run the game. But instead, I just put the oh, it is in here. I'm dumb. Sorry, it is in the while loop. But I was putting it in the poll event loop, which if we do that, just so we test it. It means it only moves when I move my mouse, which is really weird. Also, shout out to the fact that in SDL, I don't know if this is like planned or not. In SDL, it only counts poll events inside of the window. If it's outside, it doesn't actually count, which I thought, which I didn't realize would be the case, but I guess that does make sense. If your window isn't focused, um, it'll stop working. But there we go. Oh, I guess I'm early today. Eldritch Griffin, hello. How's GitHub going? Uh, we'll worry about GitHub when we finish the game. Been a while, busy with work and all that. Oh, based. Wait, what do you do for work, Cyber King? Uh, I think you told me once, but I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's cool. So we're going to take it out of the poll event queue, move it into the while loop here, and it will refresh forever so long as, um, in fact, even outside of the window here, it refreshes forever, which is kind of cool. So now we don't have to worry about that anymore. If somebody was like, please, for the love of God, Gary, take it out of the poll event uh, loop. I'm merchandising beer. Oh, base your own craft beer or is it like somebody else's also i also learned because i like to read about stuff when i'm offline um what this phrase means so this is how i understand what this int main phrase mean which by the way if we actually delete it out of here it doesn't run and i was like that doesn't make sense i've never had that happen before so this is how i understand it int r argument c is the count of the amount of arguments that main is going to be requiring as a parameter to run this array is actually well it's it's it says v for vector but it's an array as far as i know is just the argument array for this count right so you could actually do something like c out arg c i and put it in like a for loop or something and it would actually print out the amount of arguments you're putting in there which i thought was kind of cute in fact let's do that let's do a print f because that's what i have on right now print f uh we'll do arg Ooh, do i have to put it in a for loop for oh god sorry i can't type uh int i equals zero i is less than arg c i i plus plus and then what we're going to do is we're going to print out uh arg v array i and then uh yeah i don't know how this is going to work but hopefully it's not too big we'll see here doesn't work why missing a semicolon here so now we see uh nothing huh is it should i be oh is this what i have to put in i actually don't know hmm yeah, I actually don't know what I have to put there, to be totally honest with you. Whatever. Anyway, all that is to say, it's like integers you can measure. And I just didn't I just didn't know that. You should commit each stream. That way we can see your progress history. Uh, oh, as a programmer? Well, I understand that this is the file for click the banana. <laughs> this is I'm just we're just building upon it and starting from scratch and building upon it and then starting from scratch. It's all been in one file. So when we make our uh, Toho shooter, it's going to be like a whole new project, getting SDL, SDL image, SDL audio, getting all that initialized, all that shit. Um, wow, three stream watch streak. Oh, I feel like I'm really becoming a fan of Gary pulling his hair out on the code. 
Uh, I is less than argc. Oh, is it empty? Print argc. Okay, well, let's try it. Um, undo, undo. So you're saying go up to argc, which is what we had before, and then print argc? I thought you'd have to print the array, but all right. Build errors because... Cannot convert argument one from int to constant character. What? Wait, what? Int print f constant character cannot convert argument one from int to constant character. Uh, print constant character pointer. Oh, I don't know. Well, whatever. Anyway, code code codenia code codenia code codenoia. You sound like a Chrono Trigger enemy, and I've never even played that game. Ha! Potentially empty. Oh, it could be. That's true. Uh, oh, hold on, Eldritch Griffin. You're based. Print out. Because I'm still used to print F. I'm used to used to C out, but I'm as I'm working with print F more and more, I'm starting to like it more than C out, personally. Um, yeah, let's try that. Doesn't work. So I think what's going on... Uh, did I miss a comma? Oh, wait, I'm a moron. That might be why. It happens. There we go. Okay, and we print out the number one, which is super obscure, but whatever. Basically, we're passing something into the main function that requires this code. Probably SDL is throwing something in there. Codania, hello! Try STD format. You love it more than printf? Well, we'll see. We'll see. So your function only has one argument? Mm hmm, maybe. One is the name of the program, usually. Oh, it might be. I don't know. That's just what I read about it, because I was like, what does this even mean? But now I can actually input it without, like, chat looking at, like, looking at chat and be like, all right, guys, what do I put in there to make this run? Now I kind of get it. Anyway, all it is to say, now we're going to be working on... Weep! Bam! We're working on rotation of textures. We're going to take a texture and we're going to rotate it. I don't even know what this is going to teach you. The ideal here is that we're not just going to have a circular, like, rotating texture all the time. We're going to be um, having something that points toward the mouse, which is going to be awkward. But I think we could do it based on our previous knowledge of SDL. Pronounce like in source code plus paranoia. So, codonia. Cute. C out argv0 print endl. Nah, I've always, whenever I use endl, everybody gets their panties in the bunch. It's like, it's inefficient. Meanwhile, I'm like, should we be dividing here four times a frame? And everybody's like, division. What are you worried about, dude? It's 2024. All right. So SDL2's hardware accelerated texture rendering also gives us the ability to do fast image flipping and rotation. In this tutorial, we'll be using this to make an arrow texture spin and flip. Okay. So we don't have this texture class, but what does he add to it here? Um, L texture, delete the texture, uh, load from file, which is something we have here, but better, which is like a render texture. Why are my colors gone? Hold on. No. Hold on. Why are my... Oh, because I have it already open. God, I'm a fucking moron. Okay, my bad. Okay. Uh, this is our current load texture, except we use a newer function that didn't exist the time of the tutorial. Or he did, but he didn't care to update it. Um, image load texture, which is an amazing function. What the fuck is great about my font? Oh, I don't know. I think it's cute. Also, chat, is there a way... I wanted to do this to fuck with you guys, and I forgot. There must be a way to change the spacing in between the tabs. People always say it should be two or four, and I want to do three. That, that would fuck with people, right? Fonts and colors. So that's our font. Okay, sweet. Um, trust settings, find, auto recover. It must be an environment, right? Tabs and windows. Tab width, tab height. Loading numbers. Insert new tabs to the right of the existing tabs. Ew. 
bind and replace extensions i like how nobody's showing me <laughs> because they don't want me to do it mm. all right you guys are spared for now all right insert new tabs show tabs okay you guys are spared for now Oh, STD print line is available in C++23 and Mavs implemented it. You want to try that? Nah, we'll use printf or print. Yeah, we'll use printf. Also, fun fact. I didn't know this. Um, people always told me I don't need return zero anymore. But look what happens when we render this program without it. Oh, it works. What the fuck? Oh, I thought I had to have it because of uh, because of um, SDL, but I guess I don't. Okay, based. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so what does he add here? We have deallocating textures, set color, which we don't have, but uh, we don't really need it for our purposes. Basically, when you load a texture into this texture class, like L texture banana or something, what you can do is when you load in that texture, you can actually modulate the alpha and the color at the same time you initialize the class object, right? That's the point behind it. Now, I have no intention, like alpha modulation is gonna be necessary, but we'll worry about that when we do the full project. I don't even think we're gonna need set color blend or whatever the fuck. Blending, blending is like, some alpha of some color in the image that your texture that you're loading so it could be like you want a like a title card or something that is like faded in kind of like death or something like dead then you would have like some sort of blend mode uh this is render so this is like banana dot render you render the location that you're rendering in the rectangle and oh my god Point, center, flip. Okay. So this is going to be something new. We'll come back to that. Get image dimensions. The M texture uh, for the class. The int width and height for the class. So what he's adding here is he's adding SDL renderer flip. Flip equals SDL flip none. So we might have to make a new local renderer. Void render where the final parameter is SDL renderer flips. Hold on, where's my create renderer? Create renderer requires. Whoop. Create renderer. Oh, that's too far. There we go. Uh, create renderer requires a window, an int index, which is negative one for like priority reasons. You can read it in the paragraph below. And then uh, we have it right now, STL renderer accelerated and renderer present vsync because there's gonna be vsync matching on our game, right? So what we're saying is that the final one is either, oh, well, well, it's gonna be actually based on, actually, what is going on here? Oh no, this is a custom function. Oh, I'm sorry, oh my God. Okay, it's a class, it's a method, right? It's dot render, so you make it what you want it to be. And in this case, we're requiring SDL renderer flip, flip, SDL flip done. So this, okay, wow, cool. And then gets image dimensions. All right, let's read it. Evening, are you winning? Meowletary, hello. Yes. Yes, we are winning. Uh, here we're adding more functionality to the texture class. The render function now takes in a rotation angle, a point to rotate the texture around, an SDL flipping enumerator. Let's read that. SDL render flip, none, do not flip, horizontal, flip horizontally, vertical, flip vertically. Okay. If you want to do a diagonal flip, you need both. Use a bitwise or vertical line operator. Okay, that's pretty simple. So I'm trying to think of in a video game, what would you use this for? What would you have flip horizontal, flip vertical when you render a texture? Maybe if you're looking in a mirror? Would you ever do that though? Because I feel like if you're looking in a mirror, you're re-rendering part of the game as its own like thing. Player character, if you have the same sprite for walking. Oh, I see. So if you have a character like Mega Man, right? Mega Man has a gun on his right hand, right? 
and he's like when he shoots he holds his left hand over his right hand it's like boom, 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 and he does that right so if you shoot with your right hand and you flip over you can you don't like shoot with your left hand anymore even though he does in Mega Man X but we don't talk about that he actually flips oh no that would make it his left hand oh shit well that's fine nobody ever pays attention to that don't worry about it <laughs> It will cause minor inconsistencies, but everybody does it anyway. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, actually, Mega Man X does do that. OK, that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's OK. <laughs> it's like um, it's like in Marvel versus Capcom with the guy with the metal claw that nobody knows the name of. He uh, Spencer. No, not Spencer. Whatever. His name starts with an S, I think he um, he's like, uh, di is it? What is it? Dynamic punch. He has a metal arm, but it's only on his left hand and it flips both sides. And I just think that's funny. X is a different universe. Yeah, so is your mom when I'm done with her. Who redeemed? Yeah, there you go. Get the maid out of my face. Buzz, buzz. Colors aren't fixed yet. Don't redeem shit, okay? Lucas, hello. Okay, okay. So that's an example of flipping. Okay, sweet. So we would probably want this on like any sort of situation. We would expect something to be flipped. Okay, cool. Um, like with clipping rectangles, we give the arguments default values in case you want to render the texture without rotation or flipping. Um, so like null, SDL sensor, null pointer, render flip, flip, SDL flip, none. So you can change that later if you want to. Okay. What does he do here? Uh, under the render function, under the class L texture, so banana dot render again. Um, we're pulling in two ints, a rectangle, a double angle. Double being the operator for um, initializing a double and we call it angle. OK, I wonder why that's so big, but why isn't that an int? I'm assuming this is zero to three hundred sixty degrees, right? A full circle. I wonder why he um. I wonder why he opted for an angle or a double. Like, wouldn't that be like integer territory? Double angle identity. Oh, <laughs> uh, SDL point pointer center because you're passing by reference. <laughs> and then we have a new one. SDL renderer flip flip. OK. Set rendering space and render to the screen. So a rectangle render quad there. OK, that's we, that's fine. He's not actually rendering anything with this, by the way. He's just creating an SDL rectangle with these dimensions of X, Y, M width, M height, which is part of the class of L textures. So you can pull that into the is that inheritance is this is not inheritance, right? This is a method under this class. So this class is going to have the name of an object like banana render and you're pulling the M width and M height information from this class. Is that inheritance? I don't know if it is. It's the lightest form of it. It's in radiance. The fuck? But what about 180.5? Well, why do you need decimal numbers in rotation? What? Who does decimal? Num do you? Oh, Chad, do you want to know what triggers me is when pixel games have perfect like frame rate, FPS, just object rotations. Ah, Gary, how's your trig? Uh, listen, buddy, you're talking to a college dropout. OK, uh, set clip rendering dimensions. If clip equals null, uh, what? If clip, what is clip? Uh, the rectangle we input with it. If it's equal to null, make this quad width and height equal What? Wait, what's he doing here? Setting clip rendering dimensions. So if clip, which is this pointer rectangle by reference, is equal to null pointer, meaning we don't input any information there, we set this render quad rectangles width and height to clips width and height. But clip is null. What does that imply? Zero? Like, 
wouldn't you want the opposite? Or... Wait, I'm confused. It says we're setting clip rendering dimensions, which implying this is the variable that's changing its value, but that's not necessarily true, right? You're saying this is now equal to this. Clip is different than... No oh! Oh! Oh, I'm dumb. I'm reading this backwards. If... Clip does not equal null, then render this, else don't do this code. Okay, my bad. I was... Okay, explanation points are difficult for me, I guess. Okay, listen, shut up, chat. I'm learning. Uh, render to screen. SDL render copy X. That's a new one for me. What's that do? Render copy X. Copy a portion of the texture to the current rendering with optional rotation and flipping. Oh, it's an expansion of render copy. Except now, instead of just taking the renderer, the texture, and the two rectangles, which is, um, the, if you have, like, a sprite sheet, this first rectangle is where on the sprite sheet you're rendering from, and then this is, like, how big the rectangle you're gonna be that you're copying the render of. And then this is now a double angle. It does require a double angle, or a double of some kind, so it does require decimals. Um, you then have an SDL pointer to the center, so where on the object you're rotating from. And then render... Uh, SDL renderer flip. So basically, is can it even flip, right? Is it set to true, you know? Well, not true, but is it there? So interesting. So now we can EX for extra? Render copy extra? I guess that's how I'm going to remember that. EX is an interesting way to phrase that. Uh, this function works the same as the original render copy, but with added arguments for rotation and flipping. So render quad, clip, angle, center, flip. Center is this SDL pointer. Okay, gotcha. So as you can see, we're just passing the arguments. Yep, yep, yep. Basically, pi is angle of full rotation, and you want and if you want half, you divide by two. If you want third rotation, you divide by three. If clip is null, which is possible input for the function, then clip X, clip Y would be dereferencing a null pointer, which is undefined behavior. Yeah, 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 I was just reading it backwards. So, hold on. I'm gonna flashbang you, you ready? Boom. Okay, this is how I understand circles. All right, circles for dummies who dropped out of college, okay? In a circle, that looks like my dad's stomach. Hold on. Okay. In a circle, you have... Okay, you start at this point. This is how I understand pi, or whatever you guys are just saying, right? So this is a full rotation around the circle, okay? That's its diameter. If I took... Sorry, not the diameter. I'm sorry. Parameter. This is the diameter. If I took the diameter of this circle and I asked you how many times can it go around the outside of the circle, it would be um, pi, right? So what we're saying, actually, what are we saying? Bro, that is not pi. What is it? Half pi? Semi pi? Curimeter? So, wait, what are you saying? I thought you guys were using pi and I was like, yeah, that's, I kind of get it. I don't know how that would devise into it. Okay, I'm right. Okay, sweet. All right. So in the main loop, which is here. Oh my God, we need to clean this up. Okay, uh, quit equals false. Event E, yeah, double degrees. Okay, so we're gonna create a double whose degrees is equal to zero. So by the way, we're gonna be making something totally different here. All he's gonna do, I think he's just gonna base it around um, He's just going to base it on, yeah, he's going to make us press a key, and that key is going to be flipping the image. Okay, we're going to do something different, but we'll come back to that. Um, uh-huh, renderer. Okay, then we're going to create a renderer flip. Flip type equals flip none. So flip type is the name of our thing. We're going to create an SDL renderer flip, which is what we looked at earlier, right? Yeah, it's an enumerator. Okay, and then we're setting it to none. Before we enter the main loop, we declare variables to keep track of the rotation angle. 
handle. This is the pull events. This is the quit, which we have here. Else if E type equals key down. So he's defining key down as like uh, A, D, Q, W, E. A, D, Q, W, E. Okay. So what he's saying is like, um, he's just letting you press any key to flip it. So degrees plus or minus 60. Interesting. And then you flip vertical. It's like a toy you make to kind of rotate the object a bunch. But we're going to do something more complicated than that. In the event loop, we want to increment, decrement the rotation of the AD keys and change the type of flipping with the QWE keys. Uh, we then clear the screen. We render the arrow. If you don't clear the screen, like if we kept our render draw color shit up here, what would happen is that we would rotate the object. It, it would rotate the object, but the old object would stay. It would be like Microsoft Paint or not Microsoft Paint. It'd be like the old windows where like the system would bug out and like your mouse would be traced on top of each other. Um, that's what it would be like, I think. Yeah, it's two pi, AKA tau, radians or pi diameters. Oh. To bread, hello, welcome to the uh we're gonna be programming soon stream. Uh so then we're gonna render the arrow. So G arrow texture, which we're gonna probably use banana or something. Uh screen width minus arrow texture get width. So so under that render function that he created earlier with the class, he's gonna be grabbing the screen width of the arrow texture. Basically, he's making it a certain size. He's going to pass a null, interesting, degrees, which is zero here, but we can change that with the, um, the E type input. Null, and then flip type. Okay. Update screen, which is the renderer here. We render present, but... Oh, no, he does update with render present based. Here we do the actual rendering. First, we pass the X and Y coordinates. That may seem like a complicated equation, but all it does is center the image, obviously. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The next argument is the clip rectangle. Since we're rendering the whole texture, it is set to null. The next argument, rotation in degrees. The next argument is the point we're rotating around with this is null. The last argument is how the image is flipped. The best way to wrap your mind about how to use rotation is to play around with it. Experiment to see what type of effects. Okay, easy. We're going to make a new program. Um, In fact, let's delete a lot of this. So get rid of this. Error reports, fine. This is all going to stay. Maybe change the resolution to be like 400 by 400 or something. I think that's fair, right? Yeah, it's not going to run. Okay. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Then we're going to be putting this up here. Oops. We're going to put this down here. Get rid of this for loop. Put that in the while loop. Okay, let's get rid of a few things here because we're going to be making a whole new thing soon. So we don't need that rectangle. We don't need this. We don't need the query texture anymore. We don't need get with or get height. Animation frame, animation frame, animation test. Scoreboard background, let's just call it main window background main window background okay sweet nothing else breaks sweet make animation template get rid of that and then we have render error report initialize okay so I think this is like basic bitch setup, right? Okay, sweet. So now we have a four by four. I need to set the color of that. Why is that black? Does it need to be in the... No, wait, why is that black? Oh, we never drew the rectangle. Hold on. Um, in fact, let's do it. So let's make... Main window background is created. So we're going to be... No, that should work. Wait. Screen resolution X, Y. Wait, why doesn't this render white? Uh-oh. That shouldn't, that's not correct. It's in, it's created. Screen resolution X, screen resolution Y equals main window background. Render the address of main window background. We're going to fill the rectangle. Oh, we're not updating the image. Oh, shit. Hold on. I deleted it. 
SDL render present. And we're going to be rendering with the M renderer dot render. Okay, now it works. Hey, I'm learning. Hey, let's go. Yeah, there you go, Lucas. You had the right idea. You, you got it. You got it. All right. So now we're going to make a program. This is the goal today, okay? We're going to make a program where we have <laughs> what will probably end up being a banana. We're going to have a banana in the center of the screen. This banana will rotate based on wherever the mouse is. Oops, I can't draw a mouse. Whatever, however you draw that. We're going to rotate based on the location of the mouse. Probably where that point is, right? And that's it. That's really all we're going to do. We could do like the flipping shit, I guess, if we really want to, where it's like if it goes below half, it'll flip. But I just let's get to that first. And that's really um, what this tutorial is going to be teaching. So here's what I think we do first. I think it's time for us to make a class. And I think it's time for us to do um, class uh, texture make. This class will have the following functions public. It will be uh, what do we need here? We're going to have a render function. OK, so I'm less familiar with making classes. Hold on. What does he do? Establishes initializes the variables. OK. Texture make and this will initialize the variables. Then we're going to delete texture make. What was that? Oh, I can't read that. Hold on. What does that say? To bread subscribes. Oh my goodness. Thank you. That's so nice of you. Thank you. Oh, you subscribed. Oh, well, now you're just twiddling my winkle. If you catch my drift. So what are we grabbing here? We're initialize. We're grabbing the variables. Initializes the variables. He named a function after the class. What is the function L texture? Is that just the this? It might be. So we're going to call the render function. Oof. Are we going to have two render functions? That seems awkward. Yeah. Well, let's ignore that for a second. We'll come back to that later. Let's try to relearn how to make a class here. So we're going to have. Well, what do I want it to do? If we're going to be loading a texture, I guess it's time to get rid of this because we're going to use it now to load a texture. So this is going to end up being. Uh, texture. Make render. So we're going to come back to that in a second. So we're going to have texture make render here and we're not initializing, right? Oh, we are. SDL rect pointer. It's a rectangle, right? Oh, SDL texture. My bad. So SDL texture pointer texture make render, which is not what we're going to call it. Render. OK, so now this function gets called when we have, you know, banana dot render or whatever. Why does that not work? Oh, because we didn't declare it right. OK. So this. Do I prototype in the class? Is that allowed? I guess I do. It seems weird, but OK. You don't need the scope inside of the class. That's the constructor and deconstructor. Oh, still learning deconstruction. I don't I'm still learning exactly when I do that. I know I have to, but like I don't need to deconstruct the surface that we make. I guess if it's like locally scoped or something, maybe I don't know because we're not working with surfaces when we load textures. So a lot of the deconstruction the guy uses in the tutorial doesn't apply to us because we're using hardware acceleration instead of using our CPU to like create a temporary like surface, you know? So we're going to have the render function. We're going to need the parameters. SDL rectangle and we're going to call it 
uh, texture parade texture parameters yeah we have to pass because this is going to require a renderer and a path to the image this will load the texture that's going to load it to the original resolution that we establish Man, it seems like um, image load texture is just taking care of all of this hard work. Like, do I even need this? It seems such a roundabout way. I guess it's good because we'll contain all the information. So I guess, what do we need? Let's ask ourselves this. When we ever we load a texture and we do anything with it, what information do I want to have access to? We want the ability to render it. That's one thing. So I guess we need SDL set alpha. Set texture alpha mod. Is that what I'm looking for? Uh, that is an int under texture make that I just made. What? No, get out of there. Every time you attempt to make a class, you think about functionality, method. It won't get you anywhere. Think about data, fields, and write them down first. But what do I want to have access to? Because right now, if I just had this, this would work. Because all I would be doing is like, well, let's let's do it right now with just this information. What do I want to change? So it would be texture make banana. Okay, and this banana has no information about it. Okay, sweet. Now we're going to do banana dot render with parameters m renderer dot render and banana dot oops banana dot png. This works. Well, <laughs> we grabbed the image. This is actually not what I wanted. It needs to go up here. Hold on. Now we need to grab a render copy <laughs> maybe that's what i should do i should have like a render copy thing in there huh where we grab the m renderer dot render the texture which is a uh, banana or the address of banana i guess and then uh null pointer null pointer but this is not necessary. Okay. But it is necessary. Oh. Fuck me. Not necessary. What? Doesn't work. So what about the end sign? Does this not work? That banana. Doesn't work. Um... This line cannot convert argument to from texture make to SDL texture pointer. Oh. I need to make a new thing. So we need SDL texture pointer test is equal to banana. doesn't work okay that works and now we need test two here and this will work and that does work wow well I'll be it does work so why is it that my little banana dot render is not considered an SDL texture pointer do I have to input this directly in here? There's no shot this works. Oh shit, it worked! What the fuck? Interesting. So... 
So why is banana? Oh, because render. Okay, because banana dot render is an SDL texture pointer. Okay, because that's what it returns in the function. But just banana is a texture make object. So it's not. Okay, I get it. Woo, baby. 4090 heater again? Uh, yeah, because we're pulling the banana every time. Obviously, we can copy it. I get it with what we just did. But, you know, principle is still there. Okay. Wow. I'm understanding classes a little more now. That's kind of cool. All right. So let's uh, control Z here. So this is actually what we want to do if we want to not have copies of it. So basically, we're taking the information here and we're loading it to something called test2, right? Or test for simplicity's sake, right? We're loading it to something called test. This test now has the information of this rendered object. So now when we render a copy of it, now when we render a copy of it, it's actually pulling the information, the reference of that image. So now when we render this banana, it's not gonna be like a million bananas. It's just the copy of the banana. Okay, Whew, I get it. Correct, but why are you doing that? Because we're gonna pull back here because uh, we're making a class. Now, when I pull banana, okay, that's easy enough to find that render. What else do I want in here in terms of information to, to do what we want to do, which is flip the image? So obviously we could do stuff like alpha and all that shit, right? What does it call that? Set alpha? What does he have? He has load from file, which we do not need because we're image load thing. We're combining our render and our load from file. This is all one thing. He sets the alpha, sets the blend mode, sets the color. I'm kind of tempted to only have void set alpha. And then he gets the images dimensions, which is interesting, but we'll come back to that. Okay, he has two sets of dimensions. He has gets image dimensions and then image dimensions. Get width, get height, and then M width, M height. Okay. And then the actual hardware texture. SDL texture, M texture. SDL, he creates a texture out of it. Oh! Oh, shit. Okay. So if I did something like private, well, we can make this. A okay, hold on. SDL texture pointer. Now, M texture is the main texture. So do I call this? We'll just call this test. So now if I create that, does that mean I can just take this and call it banana dot not methods, but can I just run in banana now? No, it's still not this. Hmm. So I can give it the parameter. Well, what's the point of this then? Alli initializes the variables, deallocates the memory, loads the image, which we don't need, free, which who needs deallocation right now, set color. Okay, we don't need that, but we could if we needed to. Set blend mode. Like here, let me show you exactly what we would use set color for, just so I know you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So boom, set color. We're going to go 0x. F, F, comma, 0, X, F, F, comma, 0, X, 0, 0. Okay. Doesn't work. What the fuck? Oh, because we didn't... Oh, okay, I'm dumb. <laughs> it's a parameter! Okay, so now, delete this. I'm back here. This is now test. So now what we're going to do. Mm, this is just a regular ass banana. But now what happens? 
if I set banana before this line to set color, and now we make this equal to 0x0 zero zero, or FF, 0x zero FF, 0x00. Zero zero zero. If we do that, is that going to change the color of the banana? Because I don't think it does. There are build errors. What? Uh, color make set texture. Oh, we never made the function. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. Void uh, texture make set color. We take u int 8 uh, red, right? Red, green, blue. Based. Okay. This is going to take uh, SDL texture RGB. Hmm. Probably not. Hey! I get it. Pixel format. Where's RGB? Where are you? Side to side, let's go. Let's go, let's move side to side, let's go. Render target, render color, render accelerated vsync, target texture, render or flip. We'll come back to that in a second, the whole point of this goddamn tutorial. Um, pixel format RGB, RGB, RGB. Map RGB, that's what I wanted. And it will map an RGB triple to an opaque crystal. Okay, so now we need a format. Format, which is um, it, there's a little pointer here. Format somewhere, and then it's zero x f f zero f. Oh, red, green, blue. Return. Uh, texture. Actually, we're not returning anything. It's a void function. Return void. Um, how? What was the format of map RGB? SDL pixel format. Okay, what's that? SDL picture pixel format, which is a struct. The fuck? Okay, never mind. Hold on. Fuck this. Fuck that. I get it. Okay. Ha ha ha. Okay. Cool. We're not doing color shit. I wanted to make the banana white, but you know what? Why make life complicated? Although, if we wanted to make it easier, we could do something like SDL uh, pixel format equals, or this is an enumerator, right? Oh, it's a struct. Never mind. Gary, my man, what is that font? Seiru, hello! Lohai Royal, three streams, hot damn. Uh, the font is... I forget the name of it, but it was cute. Um, it is... I don't know. Plain text? Is that what it's called? Or is that just this? I don't know. But anyway, it's cute. Oh, no, no, wait, I'm dumb. That's plain text always. The, the font is ink-free. That's what it was. I don't know. Is there something that's more extravagant? Do we have like cursive anywhere? That would be based. Hmm. No. No. There must be. There must be cursive somewhere in here, right? How do you not? You know? Hmm. No. Hmm. 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 Can't find any. Monotype Curvisa, but I will disown you if you program with that. What? Monotype. No, it's not on here. I only have Mongolian Beatty. <laughs> no, they don't like me uh, to do it. 
Yeah, I don't even have Corvisa. It's just Corbell and Corbell Light. Oh, well. Can't have it all, chat. All right. Sometimes they're just... Sometimes they just don't let you. I'm sure you could download one, but... Whatevs. All right. Stop distracting me. All right. We gotta get on the program, okay? Okay, okay. Here's, here's what we're gonna do. Fuck classes. Otherwise, we may have to revisit this. Hold on. What is he doing here? We're rendering all that. So I think what we're gonna do, instead of making the whole goddamn... Oh, no. I guess we should make the class, huh? I guess it is good practice. So... We're going to use now a new function to call it. And it's going to be the same render function, isn't it? Except we're going to be taking way more arguments in. In X, in Y. Okay, well, let's try it. Let's make a big render function where we pass int X int y, which is the parameters of the rectangle. Uh, grab the parameters of a rectangle. Clip. Uh, interesting he calls it clip, but okay. Why is this misspelled? What's going on? Oh, because it thinks that's that. Okay, never mind. Hold on. Um, double angle, so this is just the angle of the object, is equal to 0, 0.0, I guess, always. Uh, SDL point center equals null pointer. And we do need the character path, by the way. SDL, um, is it point center? Oh, SDL, underscore, point, pointer, center. Center being... Something we haven't defined yet. And then SDL, renderer, flip, flip, equals SDL, flip, none. Okay. Okay, so basically, we're going to make our homebrew function that takes like a million things here. Oh my god, it's such a huge function. Okay, this is telling me I'm fucking up somewhere. Hmm. What the fuck with font names? <laughs> uh, he hates classes and he voted F for C. Hell yeah! C++ is better. It's the sequel, baby. Okay. So I think what I'm screwing up here is that I'm passing too many parameters into this function. I think... Can we separate the rendering of the object on the screen with information about the rotational... Hold on, I'm closing my eyes for a second. I'm thinking. Okay, let me think. I'm cooking. Can we separate grabbing the image from the f the, the our computer and getting that image and then rendering a copy of it? Can we, like, decouple that from the rotational information of the image? Could we set a rectangle and we make a function called like rotate function or something could we return a rectangle and then that rectangle contains the new updated information about where the banana should rotate it would be it would be a double right that would be that would be the result of the angle change and then every time we update a frame, we call that function to calculate where the mouse position is and then rotate the object accordingly. Mm, that seems kind of complicated. Why is it called texture make? The idea is that we're going to be calling texture make banana, right? Whatever. And then all the information we need containing banana. So loading the image all that shit is gonna be under there so we can call banana render whenever we want to render the banana png you know i guess it might be simpler if we just call it like fruit or something and then fruit dot render and then we render banana maybe that'll make people more understanding of what i'm trying to do here so now if we ever need like fruit 
apple or something, we just called the fruit texture make function, you know? I think that's the idea here. So then... How would I do this? If I did it like this, using classes, because it's kind of becoming like a... Do you really need a class for that? If yes, why? Well, that's what I was about to say. It's kind of becoming just how classes work lesson along with like rotation shit. So if I'm grabbing banana and I'm doing like some rotation shit of following the mouse, I would be, what would I be updating? The texture of banana, which is this texture, or am I changing or am I using class information fruit? I guess it would be unique to banana, wouldn't it? Right? Right? Because render copy EX, that is a different function that takes in more parameters, which requires an angle, a point of rotation, and if it has the ability to flip. If that's the case, we need to run well, the angle is constantly changing every frame, right? Depending on where the mouse is. So do I put that in the main function? I don't think so, right? We would call a function. I'm just debating whether or not we're calling that function in the fruit class or if we're doing it in like main, where we call a function to get the angle of the object. Basically, how can I do this without putting it all in main is what I'm trying to do in my head. Because I, you know, it's fun. We're doing functions, you know? I'm just debating whether or not I, I have to use banana, the texture we've assigned using the fruit.render, or can I use fruit to call like the rotation? I guess that is information, right? In which case, this. Okay, fuck all this. Okay. This is fine as is. Now, we're going to be holding that. So now, if I do banana... Oh, banana's a texture, though. So if I had a, a, a number in here, angle, that gets stored into here. So could I do something like texture make fruit is equal to texture make fruit establish fruit dot angle is equal to zero dot zero. Now, if I ever want to call that rotational angle, I would do something like root dot angle, right? Am I doing this right? Do you guys understand what I'm trying to do here? Is this stupid? Or would this be... Have you looked into constructors yet? Chat, I'm going to be honest with you. The I don't know why C++ calls it a struct, because those are not constructors. All right. C++, god damn it, I just closed out of it. Ah, ah, chat, why do you do this to me? Okay, decouple that, minimize that, grab this, C++. Construct doors. Constructor is a special method that is automatically called when an object of the class is created. To create a constructor, use the same name as the class followed by a parenthesis. Oh! My class constructor, see out hello world. Class, my object, create an object of my class. This will call the constructor. Return zero. Constructor parameters. 
string brand string model int year car is equal to this constructor with create car objects and call the constructor car object oh so i could do something like double angle texture make angle is that how you establish that No, I would just make it something. Oh, I would just call itself. Yeah, that's right. And then I would grab. Oh, double angle like that. Now this must have 0, 0.0. Is that better? Oh, it doesn't render because this needs more information, but still. Texture make double angle this angle. Structs are useful in certain situations. Ronin, hello. Yeah, we're learning that. We're learning that. So class car. He asks for three things. Car takes these parameters. The parameters brand model year. What a weird syntax. So he has an attribute called brand, a string called model or attribute, and an int called year. Then he makes three variables equal those things, and then he equivocates those equal, then he e whatever establishes that X is equal to brand. Why not just have string brand? So you're saying the better way to do this is to have double angle, double X, private angle is equal to X. This is how I should do it? That is so confusing. Well, let's make sure that even works. doesn't work what now that doesn't work oh this is within a constr oh this is like I thought that was private oh this is actually in hmm. so this is not this this is this so that's how you should make that Two overloads. What? Double angle. Texture make requires double X. Angle equals X. This seems so unnecessary. So he's making a car. Yeah, and then he's making the three objects. I understand kind of what's happening. I just don't understand the syntax here. So he asked for two strings. He asked for a year. He then has a constructor called car. He asked for the two strings in the year and then as a function or parameters, brand X model Y year Z. Now what I don't understand, oh, they're parentheses, that's why. Now it works, okay, okay, Jesus. I understand. Oh my God, that was so complicated. Constructor, look at the name. It helps you construct things. Can you drive a car before constructing it? Well, I understand now. I just didn't understand like what was going on. I accidentally put curly braces when I established the object versus the parentheses, because if you make an SDL rect pointer, it requires, you know, parentheses to like see what's going on or curly braces. But to be fair, rect is a, um, Oh my god, why do I have insert on? Rect is a uh, struct, and a struct takes different syntax than a class object's constructor. Why? I don't know. Jeez. Oh my goodness. Okay. Let me just say that again. A struct requires curly braces. 
even though it's made the, almost the same way as a class object constructor. Okay, Jesus, I got it. Oh, wow, that was complicated. Okay, so now this is done. Now, I guess my question is, can I really not do this? But that may be just be a syntax thing, right? Name it angle. You have two angles in there? Well, I get that. If I can I just delete this and just do this? Apparently not. Yeah, it doesn't even work. I guess I'd have to do like this then. That works? Why? Why? C++? Why do you require empty parameters? I do not understand this. I guess you have to tell it like, hey, I don't want any parameters. Okay, but that is a con that is a constructor now. Okay. Wow. This dot angle equals angle. What? I don't have a this. What do you mean this? Solves the ambiguity. Gary, what are you doing? We're trying to make a texture rotate, but now I can do it. Okay, we're, we're based. Okay, gotcha. Is there any other information we need to grab the angle of the class object? The answer is maybe, hold on. Render copy EX, where EX requires an angle, which is comma root dot angle. No, it's not even true. It's just fruit. It's a class object. So whatever fruit is. What? No, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dot angle is the double information here, right? I guess I could do something like private um, angle info equals angle. Can I do something like or int? or double, double angle info equals angle, and then we call angle info. I don't know if that's allowed, but. Is it accessible? No, I can't. Oh shit, okay, my bad. Now I know. That's what private does. Body is empty, now it does nothing. The old version with X was fine. What? This doesn't do anything. Why? So I actually need an angle equals X or well, sorry, int or X equals angle X. That is actually required in order to run this program. What the fuck? What is the difference? Huh? You just define texture make to do nothing? What? There's no code in the curly braces. How can it? But you're defining this. Isn't this alone the constructor? You're saying that I need to establish that this is almost like a function that calls its own class? I know that makes no sense. I understand that. But we have to name it the same as the class. We then have to define the parameters of that constructor. And then in it, like a function, we define those parameters as itself. That's what it seems like. Like, I almost don't even want, like, I don't even think it's worth like labeling it like a function. I almost just want to do this. Which looks horrible, but goddamn, if it, I have to. It's like, hey, dumbass, this like this seems like it would cause more confusion than not, doesn't it? It is a function. The syntax is fine. Make X constant. Yeah, OK, that's fair. No, that's not fair because texture make this angle, by the way, is oh, no, that won't be changing. I'm dumb. No, you're right. It should be constant. That's a good point. It's going to be constant because when we load the texture for the first time, when we create 
object fruit, and then out of that fruit, we call banana PNG or whatever, right? That fruit class should always have 0, 0 as an angle, right? Because that is the default setting for all textures. So, if you're changing the angle, you don't want to change the original fruit established object, right? You're actually only using it as an initial call to be like, okay, after this rotation changes, then... Oh no, we are changing it though. I guess this is the only thing that would be constant then? Because this is like the established thing, but then what's the point? Oh, but then it's not constant. Wait, what the fuck? Is this like a syntax thing or am I like logically not understanding it? Every member function can reach this pointer. If even name the function parameter, same as your member variable name, it will work this way. This angle equals angle. I write my constructors like that in C sharp when it's only one line too. Okay. Angle equals X. What? Oh, 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 now I get it. Okay. Now I understand. Okay, when you call this, this is the number that gets inserted here. 0.0, .0 is X. Then what you're doing is you're saying, okay, under that, X is now going to be double angle. So when we call fruit.angle, we're actually calling this double, not this. Okay, holy shit, that was so complicated. I now understand. Okay, I get it. So this now can be constant. Yes, okay, now it's not freaking out because the X never changes, but the angle will. Okay, holy shit, that was so complicated. Wow, why does this have a green line? Two overloads. Function definition for texture make not found. Oh my God, are you really gonna do this to me? No, it still doesn't work. Wait, what? Variable texture make angle is uninitialized. What? Do I have to label it twice? No, I don't. This works. Yeah, no, this is right. I don't know why there's a green line there. It's not complicated. You're making it complicated, but not following object-oriented programming basics. Ooh, based. The usual convention for class members are with an M, M prefix or suffix, uh, like M angle or angle underscore, so you can use the same name in the parameter list. So you're saying... This should be underscore angle. I'm just guessing you mean angle here. And then this should be underscore angle. Is this what you're saying that should be underscored? I think so. Having issues with overloading, but okay. Forget the underscore, just make angle equal zero. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we in this specific case, you would make it equal to 0.0. .0. I understand that, but we have to understand constructors if we're using C, guys. It's just an inevitable nature of the world. Don't use underscore as a prefix, it is reserved. What do you mean by that? No, like, texture make, constant double angle, M angle equals angle. Oh. So you mean this should be called angle. This should be called angle. And you're saying these two should be called M underscore angle. So you're saying to access the method angle, 
which I think this is technically a method or maybe just render is a method. So now in order to call it, we call the method angle to kind of distinguish between angle and not that. M is for member. Sorry, member. No, you don't have to use constructors in C++. Sure, you also don't have to use vectors and you can just use arrays, but like, come on, <laughs> we should use features of the language, you know? The reason you're getting squigglies. Technically, you're not supposed to initialize a member variables with angle equals X. In the body, you're supposed to use initializer lists. You don't know what those are yet, and it's only a best practice for performance, not required. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now this is always going to be equal to zero. Okay, so now we have a rotation angle. We can worry about flipping that later, but that's the basics, okay? Then we grab the SDL point, which we haven't made yet, which is going to be a data point. So let's make sure we do this right. SDL point. And we're going to call it uh, center. No method or oh god uh m uh member center and this now we will make this double spaced okay so now this is going to be requiring in addition to a constant double it's going to be a constant sdl point uh center and this M center is equal to center. Okay, so now an SDL point requires a integer, which I think is going to be usually zero. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Uh oh. Why why are there red squigglies over the double now? Instance constructor of texture make texture make matches the argument list argument types for double int. Double Oh We haven't Oh my god. How do I do that? No pointer? No. SDL point. SDL point. Hmm. I understand what it's saying. I gave it the parameter of an SDL point. SDL point. SDL point zero zero. Oh, it does take two arguments. Oh, I wish it would say that in the struct, but okay. So you're saying it should be squirrely braces zero comma zero. That works. And it does. Okay, sweet. Sorry, I didn't realize. Uh, I thought point was just asking for it because it says it defines a point integer, but I guess a point in a cardinal system or whatever is X and Y values. Okay, understood. That makes sense to me. So I'm not going to wonder much about that. I don't know why this is a screen squiggly though. Function definition for texture make not found. It's right, right there. What the fuck? You need to make a point to pass in somehow. Yeah, we did. We're good. Yeah, um, the it looks like to bread and what's up both kind of understood very. Also, hi, what's up? Hello. Okay. Okay. It has to be SDL point. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and then what else? And now we pass to here. Root dot M underscore center, which is an SDL point, which does not work. Oh, it needs to be the address of it. Okay, based, based. Now we require uh, the flip. Okay, this one's easy. So now we have SDL. Oh, uh, what was it called? Um, oh God, I just looked at it. Renderer flip. Okay, renderer flip. And we're going to call this. Oh, no, this is an enumerator, right? Yeah, it's like a type def. Um, 
I have to look at the tutorial. Hold on. SDL flip none. Okay. We need to set it to that value, but for now we need a variable name. We'll call it M underscore flip. Now this is going to take in the parameters. SDL renderer flip flip. We do the same thing. M underscore flip is equal to flip. Okay. This will now take the parameter of SDL renderer uh, flip. Wait. Fuck. What was it called? God, I always forget this name here. SDL flip none. Where's my music? Oh, I turned it off. Um, SDL flip none. Did I do that right? I did. An enumerator. Okay, sweet. So now we call this SDL. No, we call fruit dot M flip. And that worked. And now this should run. Oh, shit, chat. This is based. God, it feels so good. Is this like crack? Is this what is this what methane feels like or whatever the kids are smoking these days? Fentanyl? Is this what fentanyl feels like where it's like you struggle so much and you learn so much and finally you can see a banana. Why is your banana so stubby? That's what your mom said about my D last night. How about you don't insult my banana, okay? Listen, if it makes you feel better, chat, uh, we can render to... Hold on, I'll make I'll make you feel better, chat. Hold on. SDL rect render rect controlled with the parameters of screen resolution uh, dot x divided by two minus screen resolution dot x divided by six comma same thing but we're gonna call it y you guys will see what i'm smoking here hold on you guys will see it don't worry and then the per and then it's gonna be as big as screen resolution dot x divided by four screen resolution resolution dot y divided by four all right that's that rectangle now here we call render rect controlled now when we do our stupid ass meme of a banana when you look at it, it's going to be rendered on... Fuck, it didn't work. I'm missing a semicolon. Hold on. What? Screen resolution Y is having... Oh, because I put a period instead of a comma. There you go. Now you have a banana. Does this make you feel better, chat? Isn't that just screen resolution X divided by three? Yes. There you go. Does that make you feel better? Is this Is this a more controlled banana for you? Is this what your life is about? This is what programming feels like. It's a better high than anything I've tried based. That's what I'm getting. It's pretty fun. I like this a lot. Structs are confusing because of the syntax is confusing. But now that we've used more than one attribute, I get it now. I get it. Now, Chad, I have a weird question. Can I move this information anywhere outside of the class? Or does that have to be in the class, the constructor? Could I do something like copy, paste, and then like delete all this shit and just do that? Does that still work? It does not. Actually, hold on. Did that work? I might have messed up the stuff here. No, that's still that's still wrong. Cause flip and like all that needs to find. Okay. Still good? No. Um
missing a semicolon. Where? Run. There we go. The point of a constructor is to initialize an object. Why would you want to move it out of the object? Oh, I was wondering if he could. All I know about coding is that after each session, I question my own intelligence based. That's about as controlled of a banana as I've ever seen. Do you guys, do you guys ever get triggered when other countries pronounce a pineapple as anana? Does anyone else get triggered by that or just me? Texture mate. Oh. Okay, hold on. Maybe this does work. Texture make. Uh, texture make? Wait, does that work? No shot this works. There ain't no shot. It doesn't work. Get fucked. No overloaded function takes three arguments. Oh, because we're not using. Hold on. Texture make. Texture. I'm not saying this is a good idea, but I'm saying we can do it. Hold on. Texture make, texture make fruit. No shot, this works. Yeah, okay, it doesn't work. You still need the arguments in the prototype. Oh, you do? Chat, I'm just, this is the dumbest shit in the world. I'm not even saying this is worth it, but I'm just saying we, we can do it. Nope. Because we're missing a semicolon before fruit. So this is still this. Oh, it worked. Holy shit. Oh, I can. Oh, wow. Why would you ever do this then? <laughs> I don't know the actual use for it, but I can indeed separate the constructor from the class. Huh. Learn something every day. So then now here, chat, this is the real, the real base take. Can I do this? Is this possible? No, the answer is incorrect, right? Yeah, it doesn't work because texture make the function isn't even defined yet. So that's why this is struggling. Okay. I wasn't sure. I'm just, just seeing, just seeing. The declaration known as the prototype by nudes should nudes, noobs should match the definition. You're only mad because you're angry about it. If America would, you know, use the proper word for ananas, you wouldn't get triggered. What, pineapples? Chat, what's what's a pineapple? Is it more banana or more apple? Obviously, it's an apple that takes inspiration from a pine cone, okay? It's a pineapple. What you're doing is a relevant thing to understand, though, using colon colon and all that. We get it. Brownie is right. You still need the arguments in the prototype. Okay. It's nothing like an apple, a pine cone, or a banana. Well, Chad, does anyone else feel trolled whenever you see asparagus growing off the ground? Because I thought about pineapples, okay? So pineapples, this is getting way off topic. Pineapples growing. So pineapples grow out of the ground and like, like you feel like a moron when you find that out, right? It grows out of a pineapple bush, which is such a meme, right? Like, it doesn't grow in a tree. But then you look at asparagus and you realize, what's the old joke that asparagus grows like you're making fun of somebody and like for saying this is how asparagus grows? Look at how asparagus grows. It looks like somebody just stuck that shit into the dirt. But no, that is actually how asparagus grows. You, it just grows straight up out of the ground. Isn't that weird? It's just, it's glorified grass. That looks disgusting. That looks bitter AF. That looks delicious. Yeah, asparagus is just really baby plants. Isn't that weird? Hmm. Love me some aspergrass based. Okay, enough distraction chat. How do we use this information? Also, can we put that back in there? I think I like the constructors in there more. <laughs> Okay, I think I like the constructors in uh, in the thing more. Okay, so now, how do we grab this flip, or this angle actually, and we rotate it? Well, I think what we need is another event type. If event type 
is equal to SDL mouse motion, which is an enumerator. Yes. Is mouse motion just in of itself? Yeah, it only activates when the mouse is moved. Okay, sweet. Then we're going to change the angle. How do you change the angle easily? Well, not only does it change the angle, we have to render the image accounting for that angle, but that's what this is for, right? The EX one. So I guess if that's equal mouse motion, then... Ooh, how do I make it track? Oh, shit. Well... Mouse motion should take care of that, right? I guess we could make an SDL point that follows mouse motion as a number because mouse motion what is it 1024 if it's true null if mouse moved we could make a point that follows mouse and then it make the angle equal to that point no that doesn't work because that only it's an x and y value plus if i move the point it's going to move like where the rotation value is so what I should be doing is we can move the angle. But the angle... Ooh, this is like a logic thing. Not a logic thing, but like, um... I need to solve it on my own here. Sorry, flashbang. So if we have our object here, and we have our mouse here, how do I get the object to rotate that amount and face the mouse? We could make an SDL point that follows the mouse here. How do I get that angle to change? I guess... I guess what I could do, because this angle is a number we've already made, right? Based on the point of rotation. So I guess what we do is we change the angle to increase until it matches like an imaginary line between the two. But how would I even make that? You can get the mouse position as well. Yeah, yeah, with like SDL mouse point get or something. We used it before, I think. I'm sure SDL does everything input wise. So that's not what I'm worried about necessarily is this. That That's trivial. But like, how do I make this face the boob? I guess what I would do is I would draw an imaginary invisible line between the point and the, the object at all times. And then the angle will always equal that line. But this is going to be difficult because the angle is just a double of 360 degrees, right? So I guess I need to find a way to make this invisible line be translated into the numbers. So I guess from the object's point of view... Everything around it is in 360 degree space, right? In terms of degrees. If the mouse is in that space, face it. If everything is like a giant clock. Hmm. Hmm, calculus. Is it calculus? I don't think this is calculus. What you can do is take the weighted average of the current angle and the current position. Well, if I wanted to be like smooth, but we're not worried about that. I just, it'll be snap. It'll be instantly. It's trigonometry. Fuck no, it's not trigonometry. Trigonometry is like cosine sine shit. It's like waves. Um, although I guess those waves are based on circles, but whatever. Draw the X, Y axis. You only have points as input. So you're saying from the object's point of view, oh, no, it'd be all complicated here. If I made it based on the whole window, if I did like this and the point is here, I can make this. That would be trivial to have this be like one giant rotation. That's fine. But how do I make it based on the object? I could do this easily here trivially with like an X, Y value. X, Y is this. Compare it to zero. Draw a line. But then how do I count for negatives? Do I do, like, the whole thing, but it can be negative? So, like, in the x, y coordinates from the object, where I have positive y, positive x, negative x, negative y, this 
coordinate is some value of x, y, which can be negative, then compare it to point zero, zero, draw that line, and that line is equal to some degree that I can make into 360 degrees or whatever. So I understand principally what I need to do, but I don't understand how to translate coordinate to zero, make it equal to some degree based on the circle around the coordinate system. That's difficult. Y goes down. Okay, well, okay, negative Y plus Y. All right, whatever. Same thing. Hmm. What do you think angles are? Oh, I never took trig. I took pre-trig. That's where I stopped. Um, all of the points input are in window space, not object space. Well, for simplicity's sake, the object is always in the center of the whole thing, right? Point zero zero, the center of the object is the center of the screen. That's for our purposes. That's what we're learning here. The tan of the angle is the same as the slope form between the regular position and the object. So just do a tan. The fuck did you just say? Um, is this like Pythagorean theorem shit? If I know this distance and I know this distance, I can find out this distance pretty easily. And if I know this distance, what does that mean? Well, no, actually, I do know both distances. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I know this distance and this distance. I don't know this. No, I do know that distance. I know the X and Y values. Wait, I got this totally backwards. I know this distance and this distance. I don't know this distance. Okay, Jesus. Okay, so if I need to find, so once I find out this length from this point to this point, comparing it to zero, we're still at the same problem of whatever this line is, whatever distance it is, I guess I don't need to recover distance. Chat, why are we talking about distance? I only care about like the rotational value of this object based on the X, Y coordinates of the point we're looking at, which is the mouse. Two distances, got it. Oh! <gasps> Oh, you're so based. Oh shit. I can look at the angle here. Oh, because this is a right angle. This is going to be some angle. And we find out this angle by finding out this distance. Oh, chat, you're so smart. Okay, okay, hold on. Everyone shut up. Okay. I'm just erasing this. To, okay. So now we have our boom, our little triangle here. Okay, so we have our right angle. We have this angle and we have this angle. This angle is what we're looking for because whatever that angle is, we're going to make it equal to this or whatever. We're going to change it. That's our that angle is our angle struct. It's it's this. It's our double M angle, right? Oops. So. I can find this, which is whatever X, Y value that is. It will then be compared to point zero zero, the Y value and the X value will be how I even get that. And then I'll use Pythagorean theorem to find out this distance. And if I find out that distance, I can find the angle of this angle. All this to get rotational shit? Oh my God, this is so complicated. I bet there's an SDL find distance angle or whatever. I bet that exists. If only there were a way to find the angle from a right triangle. Yeah, I know, chat. It's been, listen, it's been a long time since geometry, okay? Now, the question is, if I remember geometry from middle school, how do I find... How the fuck do I find that or that angle? Let me think. Chat, did I just... Why does control Z not account for erasing? What the fuck? Paint. Get into 2023. Um... So now with this right angle, how I can find this distance, but then how do I find the angles of it? Oh God, I'm trying to remember. Yes, this is a solved function, but it's fun working it out. Yeah, might as well. Do you use chat GPT? I'd rather learn it on my own first. It seems very basic. I'm sure if I asked GPT, solve this, be trivial, but I got to learn it. 
So how do I find this angle? Hmm. Based, if I know all the distances of X, Y, and Z, because we use the Pythagorean theorem, and this is a 90 degree angle, I am very aware that these two added together will make 90 degrees. I know that. So solving either one will solve the other, and I need to solve this angle. So I guess my question is, how do I get the angle of either one? Is this like a math that I haven't done yet? Because I don't remember that from geometry. I guess I remember them being like equal. I remember that. Also, why do you care about that angle? Either one, because I can solve the other. And I care about it because what we're doing is wherever the mouse is, which for example is this point, we're going to be changing this angle as a number to rotate this object up to where it needs to be, you know? Basically, that distance is what we're trying to do. So in order to rotate that distance, I have to know what angle this triangle's angle is if this is a right triangle and the distance here is the y value and the x value of this point and i think that is enough information so this distance will be z how do i find this angle or ideally this angle but either one will solve the other pretty sure this is high school math maybe middle school yeah but it's been a while sokotoa no sokotoa is um Sine, cosine, tangent. But is that angles? I think this is maybe a math that was more complicated than I remember. Chat, you have to understand, okay? I grew up in a very small town, okay? <laughs> I took geometry. But I don't know if we ever got to, like, finding the angle based on the distances of the triangles. Oof. I think this might be outside of my purview. I don't know. I never really learned math. It's fun watching someone figure it out. Yes, Gary, that is how you relate rations of triangles with those angles of those triangles. Okay, you say that like I'm dumb, but I think I'm a big boy. Okay, so I guess we should now Google. We close that. Ah! So now we Google. Oh my God. Google. And we're going to Google. Um... How to find the angle of a tri of a right triangle given all sides. The angles of a right triangle can be calculated using the law of sines or by knowing the length of the sides and the value of one angle and applying the formula Sokotoa. The fuck does that mean? If the value of the second angle is known, the third angle could be found by adding the two. Okay, I knew that. Zero equals sine negative one X. What the fuck? Altitude base hypotenuse. The zero is sine negative one X. What the fuck does that even mean? Oh my god, it is waves and shit. Oh god. Derivative of inverse x. The derivative of x inverse is 1 divided by the square root of x minus x to the power of 2, where negative 1 is less than x is less than 1. What the fuck? Chat, I just wanted to know angles and shit. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. What's Sokotoa? So, uh, so, uh, stands for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, let's do a calculator. Trigonometry calculator. Oh, baby. Side A? We don't know. Oh, no, we do know. Let's say we're at point 50. Side B is... Uh, we'll say 100. Side C, we would find that out because A squared, B squared equals C squared. So 50 squared is 2,500. Um, 100 squared is 10,000. So plus together is 12,500. Um... 
square root of 12,500. Uh, square root. 111.8. Uh, angle A is equal to, we don't know, angle B, we don't know. Calculate. You input three sides, but they do not make a right try. Oh, come on! There. 111.82663. So that is what we need. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, I was right. We only need two sides of the rectangle. So this is the formula to figure out the angle of angle A. But how do we implement that into the program? Side A is just the Y difference between the center of your thing and the position you want to point at. Side B is the X difference. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, we figured that out. Like A is the Y value, B is the X value. I understand that. It's just, um, how do we take that information and apply that and find A? And the answer is trigonometry. But what I don't understand is how can I take that idea and implement that into the program? So tan theta is equal to Y difference divided by X difference. There must be... There's no sign option in programming, right? C++ sign. Oh my god, it does exist. What the fuck? Sign of X radians. Sign. Oh my god, that does work. Oh shit, wait. I could just do sign parameters X, Y. And that's all I need? No shot. That's not what the formula is. It's X divided by Y. That's not what I need, though. Um, hmm. It's sine X something to the power of negative one. Is that what I'm inputting? What is X and Y though? It's not, it's not the point of the mouse X, Y values, right? Because dividing them makes no sense. You want the inverse of sine, it should be. Oh, because, okay, so Katoa, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right, I'm dumb. It should be A tan. I don't know what A tan is though. What's A tan? How is that different from tan? What's the difference between tan and A tan? Okay, and then we're going to be dividing X divided by Y. And that's the number? A tan is tan inverse. Why do I want the inverse? To be fair, I might just need to like open a book on trigonometry. C++ doesn't have a native thing you can include. Oh, I'm sure it has, like, math. Uh, there we go. Um, hold on. Um, tmath.h. Oh, type generic math. Every function in math that takes at least one double as an argument, except mod f, is defined in tmath.h as a macro with the same semantics, but taking generic parameters instead. Each of the arguments provided for these generic parameters that is of an integer type is casted to a double. Arguments for floating point types are used without transformation directly as a float double or long double. This header automatically includes math.h and complex.h. The type generic function can also take complex values if the function exists in complex. Oh, shit. So I want tmath.h. Okay, sweet. Now, how do I grab um, tangent? Tan under cmath. C plus plus eleven. Um, parameters is just x. So the tan parameter times pi divided by one hundred and eighty. This is 
the outside of the circle multiplied by 3.14 or whatever pi is divided by 180 which is the diameter is the tangent so if i'm not finding out the tangent this way no that's not the tangent you're finding the tangent of that but we're not dividing x and y values here or i guess what is the x divided by y it would be the x and y values of the point right because the tangent is the the angle the hypotenuse is increasing from the line created by x to zero. Oh god that is so complicated okay so using tangent x divided by y the x value being the bottom line the y value being the vertical line that comes off as a right angle to x is going to find me the hypotenuse of that triangle except it won't that's the pythagorean theorem it's going to find me the angle that that hypotenuse increases from x holy shit that is so goddamn complicated tan is when you get a bit of melanin under your skin a tan means you pale as hell oh jesus the anti-tangent is where your pen goes when you drop it under your table. Math should be plenty, maybe. Can you once build a game? Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, chat's getting impatient with me. I'm learning. I'm, I'm losing my goodwill. Okay, so basically all that is to say, we'll probably just use some basic function to figure this out. But now we know. Um, so we're going to need... Now that we know that, we're going to make a new function. We're going to call it. Double. Find new angle. And this is going to take the parameter of a double. Uh, angle. So this double angle. What it's going to do is it's going to find the new angle based on a mouse input. So we're going to need SDL get mouse state, which is a function that requires pointer X, pointer Y. Uh, we're going to call that mouse state. I guess we could whatever mouse. And this is going to require X and Y pointer values. So we're going to need the uh, pointer. Wait, why isn't that accepting it? No, that's a function. Oh, we're calling a function. I need... Ooh, what do you call... Ooh, that's complicated. I guess I could just call that in the function, right? So I just need two int pointers. Who followed? Hus, hus, husne, rius. Hello, thank you for following. Okay, so we're gonna need two int pointers called x mouse and int pointer y mouse, and that's all I need for that. Now, this double return value, it's gonna have the information of SDL get mouse state and it's going to require x mouse and y mouse <sighs> that's going to grab those two states how do i take this information What do I do with it? Retrieve the current state of the mouse. The state button state is returned as a button bit mask, which can be tested using the SDL button X macros. Okay. X and Y are set to the mouse cursor position. Okay, gotcha. So it's returning X and Y. X mouse and Y mouse are now the X and Y position. So we're going to use a tan to return x mouse divided by y mouse except those are pointers Oof. does that not work i guess i could well how do i make them not pointers oh shit we're passing by reference how do you store data 
well, in a variety of ways. The problem is your banana isn't at zero, zero. Yes, it is. Um, where is it? Um, when we made fruit, fruit is defined as STL point M center, where M center is zero dash zero. So it's actually in the very top left of the screen. Screen <laughs> resolution dot X divided by two comma screen resolution. That would have been a fun bug to find resolution dot y divided by two now it's in the center of the screen okay based and that's e here okay now that's in the center of the screen okay based okay but how do i grab the tangent of x mouse and y mouse do i even need to take these as parameters I guess I do, huh? Because wherever we move our mouse, we're going to need to call. Yeah, any sort of mouse motion. Oof. Hmm. How do you store data? Why do we always have arrays, variables, etc.? Ooh. You can dereference a pointer using a star, so it would be eight. Oh! Thank you. Now that is some good ass advice. I didn't know you could do that. So chat, if I dereference the pointers and then I do shit to them. Oh, all I'm returning is an angle. No, that's fine. It's fine to dereference the pointers because all I'm returning is just the angle double. Okay, sweet. So now, okay, we'll come back to that in a second. So whenever we move the mouse, what are we doing? We're grabbing the X and Y value of the mouse. Oh, we're basically just calling that function. But how do I toss over X and Y values? Do I care? Do I just establish it in here? Do I just go int X mouse int Y mouse and just call this function? You just say fuck it? I think I can do that, right? Uh, int is compatible. Oh, and we need pointers here. So address of int, address of int. So that'll make these two change the values of these. Isn't there an SDL thing that gives you the X and Y mouse? Oh, never mind. You got that. Yeah, we got that. So I think all I'm counting here, hmm, angle is going to be equal to this ATAN function, right? I think so. And this angle is now the angle of that. So I think what I do here... Because I already make it above. I think what I do here is I say... Banana... Or fruit... Dot M... Angle is going to be equal to... What do I call the function? find new angle based on fruit dot M angle. Is that how I call that function? I think so. Double angle and this needs to be reduced now to um this just needs to be double angle. This just needs to be math. Okay. I think I did this right. Um, I wonder if that's all I need. Didn't work. Shit. Uh, find new angle. Must return a value. Oh, shit. Return angle. Okay. Please work. Okay. I'm going to put my mouse over this goddamn banana, and I had better see this banana rotate to where the mouse is. I did not learn trigonometry for nothing. It crashed the program. Shit. Hmm. 
it has to be something to do with this, right? Because it calls this function every time the mouse moves. And then this re-renders the image. It rend... Okay, what happens here? Make a white background. Fill the background. Copy what is on. And then render what's present. So every time... Oh, I guess we could clear SDL. Is that something I have to do is like clear the screen? Clear the current rendering target with the drawing color. Yeah, I think I have to do that every time, right? Otherwise, we might have like a million things on the screen. Okay, so now we run it. And it crashes. Why does this crash? It must be the math here, right? Is the angle not equal to the tangent, the inverse tangent of X mouse and Y mouse? That's the only thing I think that wouldn't work here. The new angle is equal to this of the old angle. Where we grab the X and Y value. It must be this. Y mouse equals zero. No, that's not going to work, chat. No shot. This isn't going to work. Fuck you. No way. <gasps> oh! Oh, it's moving! It's moving, chat! We have movement! Oh, it's my first movement! Okay, it's fucked up and it crashes. But it does work. It's just the... Oh, God. It does work, but there's something kind of fucked up here where it's not calculating the angle correctly. But there is movement. And if I move too fast, I think the program just crashes. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, we have movement. It's based around like some point way down there. Okay, so something happened here. Hmm. They are uninitialized. Now they're here. Make sure Y mouse does not equal zero. The problem is your banana isn't at zero, zero. Your coordinate system is all messed up. No, it is. Um, look, the, the point of the banana, the fruit class, is that it's in the center of the screen. Oh. Wait. Hold on, what else am I doing here? So the angle starts at zero. Flip is equal false. M center is the center of the image. The center of the image is the center of the screen. So is this the issue where I'm calling it incorrectly? Hmm. X and Y is window space. Y goes down. You assume the center of the screen is zero, zero when it's actually the top left. Guys, I know the center of the screen is not zero, zero. I am aware of that. But what I don't understand. Oh, am I? Oh, hold on. I need to draw this in paint. In what, in what I'm accidentally doing, am I doing this where it's like, this is the game window. This is the banana. And I'm actually like calculating everything up here. Is that what's going on right now? And I'm doing all the math up here. So then do I set Y mouse? to the screen of the resolution, so like negative 500? No, that didn't do anything. In fact, it crashed the program still. Hmm. You need to convert XY into object space of the banana. This X and Y? No, because this X and Y, the get mouse state is literally just changes depending on where the mouse is. So what's happening is this function only activates when the mouse moves on the screen. When the mouse moves in any capacity, call this function, okay? This function grabs the X and Y value, finds the angle, the double of X and Y, return angle. This angle is the new angle of the fruit class, which refreshes the fruit, right? So it does work. It's just the rotation value is all fucked up and sometimes it crashes. Don't you think you ought to save your banana's previous position so that when you want to access update it, you won't have to reinvent the wheel? What? Corky bug, hello! 
the function overrides it anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time the function activates, we re-render the screen the next frame. So the old banana just gets cleared, right? It's not like we're stacking a million bananas and white screens on top of each other. Corky Bug, I'm fantastic. How are you? Got a new cosplay going? Um, don't you think you ought to save your banana's previous position so when you want to access update it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel? No, I don't have to, right? Because the only thing we're changing, chat, we're not changing where the center of the image is. We're not changing, like, the parameters of the image or, or where it is on the screen. The only thing we're changing is the double angle. Which, because we're using this function, the, the double angle, the fruit M angle, whatever, that's the only thing it's changing. It's just the number from 0 to 360. Oh, is it because... Whoops. Is it be... Oh, I know what's happening. Boop. So it... Oh, because if the number's too high, it's outside of the scope of 360. So it only crashes if I leave the center. Oh, no, that works. What the fuck? Oh, no, there it goes. Hmm. I'm dead tired. I've been away from home for two weeks. I'm going to go install games. Just wanted to say, ah, hello, hello. So what am I trying to do here? I think this is correct. That's always correct. I think. This might be where we have the issue. But the only thing that's changing is the angle. I'm not doing anything else. It is wrong? Is it the math? Because if it's the math, you might as well tell me or I'm never going to know. Um, is there like a... <laughs> is there like an SDL find tangent? <laughs> or tangent? No, okay. I can't get away with it. SDL game controller get Apple SF symbols is name for button. Oh, I can find the name of the button that they're using on their controller? Yo, based. Is this... What if I just run tangent? What does that do? Uh, nothing. But I can see it's trying to rotate. But it's rotating around like an angle in the very bottom right, like very far away. But it is tracking the mouse movement correctly. It is wrong. Draw it on MS Paint. Oh, Jesus. Okay, hold on. MS Paint. Okay, what are we doing here? We have a window. We have an object. This object's center never changes. It is always exactly in the middle of the screen, and that's what we use as reference for where we're going to rotate. The rotation angle is based upon the ATAN of this x value divided by this y value which should give us this angle so unless it's something math related that i just don't know the answer to what's actually happening is that it's rotating based on somewhere over here and it's rotating just a little bit here and here that's the issue we're having Oh, oh, it's negative. You're right. Oh, it's negative Y mouse. Is that the answer? Oh, oh, it's it's doing something different. It is. Well, it is rotating, but we're getting closer, I think. So it doesn't register everything here. When I clip this coordinate, then it kind of tracks. And then it stops. It's almost like... It's almost like it doesn't read anything here and it only reads everything here. How weird. Then it crashes. Draw X, Y axis, Y goes down. Instead of changing the banana's direction to the mouse position, try changing it to an arbitrary value to make sure that the code for changing the banana orientation works. So angle is going to be equal to uh, 50. 
There are build errors because we're missing a semicolon. So now, the only thing I changed is the number 50. The fuck? Oh my God. How the fuck does that even work? I don't even know where to start with that. How does, how does changing the angle to 50 make the banana fuck off to Narnia? Okay, I want it to rotate up 50 degrees, so it rotates somewhere up here, and boom. How does that even... I feel like I'm making a Sonic game right now. How is this shit so bugged? <laughs> what is going on? Okay. Hmm. So I'm returning 50, so 50 is the new M angle. M angle is just a double, and it's the only value... Is this because it's, like, relative to where... How does it move the whole image? That tells me I'm fucking up something with the center, but I don't understand how. I'm not even touching the center. Does rotating an object around the center means it inherently moves that I have to account for that? There's no shot, right? Is it like a relative thing where it's like it when you move rotationally, it's like not based on the point. It's based on some other arbitrary like the window surface it's based on or something. It should be. Angle is equal to a tan y mouse minus center y x mouse minus center x. But if mouse is less than center x, you need to set angle equals pi plus angle. I don't know why you don't read the docs. That's not a general solution. Caveat added. If x mouse is less than center x, you need to set it to angle. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. So you guys are saying that in the window we create, we have an object here that's based on the coordinate system. And what's happening is this math only works when the X and Y value are positive, which is here. And it rotates around this point. But I'm fucking up even further than that because the tangent is assuming that it's based in this corner or this corner. And so it's all kind of fucked up. And that's why when I run the program, that happens. It's just, it's just boom, going out in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. Well, let's try the solution. ATAN works over 180 degrees. Oh, do I need like an if statement in there where it's like if it's negative? So ATAN, let's just copy paste here. Y mouse minus center Y? Y mouse divided by X mouse that. Let's just run that. I want to see, I want to see what happens here. Yeah, we still have the same problem, except it's the opposite. Because I did X divided by Y a second ago, and this is Y divided by X. So it's still the same thing where there's like this break point in between of like not rotating to rotating because it's only taken half the graph. So maybe we do something like if Y mouse, if Y mouse equals, I almost want to make it an unsigned integer. Wait, what does that do? Unsigned. I know this is going to do some goofy shit. I am very aware of that, chat. Just bear with me a second. Build errors. Because... I have an address to an unsigned int. Is that not allowed? Incompatible with parameter type int pointer. Oh, because get mouse... Oh, wow. Get mouse state does not accept negative inputs. Based. ATANS returns its answer in radians. You want degrees to pass to render copy X. Okay, Arco, some of us are college dropouts. 
what is a radian? Hmm. An angle in degrees that indicates the rotation will be applied to destruct, rotating in a clockwise direction. I think I understand that WhatsApp, but I guess this is, I guess this is just my limitations as like a person, right? Where I just didn't have trigonometry experience. This is one of those things where I think I would actually just either n study trigonometry or, you know, download an answer, you know? Like, I feel it's just I am so out of my depth in terms of math that I feel like this is where, like, my weakness comes in as, like, a computer scientist, you know? Because I just, I just don't know trig. So, I guess, let me kind of paint what I'm imagining here. So what I'm imagining we're doing is that we have a window. We have an object in the center of the window with a fixed point of exactly in the center of the window. Wherever the mouse is, the object is supposed to rotate up based on this angle. However, this angle is something we have to calculate via a tan of inverse tangent of this line and this line because we have triangles and shit we got to calculate, right? The problem I'm having is that when we run it, it's actually moving the object way the fuck over here, and I don't understand why. If you draw like I said, you see, but you don't, so... Draw it like how it's done in the program. Where is zero, zero? Zero, zero is here, okay? I understand that. What I don't understand is that we've established that the point, the center, where is the center point? Screen resolution X divided by two, screen resolution Y divided by two. What are you trying to do? Take this object, rotate it based on the mouse movement. Also, detains, hello. So I think what's going on, because we've already made this point class of texture, where is it? This class, fruit, we've established that its center point that we are rotating around in the in the function render copy ex is screen resolution x divided by two, screen resolution y divided by two. So it is in the perfect center. Render copy x already accounts for the point in which you're rotating around. What is screen width? What is screen height? Screen width and screen height are based on the window size, which we've established at the very start of the program is 400 and 400. So the center point is 200, 200, right? That is always the case. Oh my God, keep drawing. Oh Jesus. Okay, fine. Let's keep drawing. This resolution is 400. This resolution is 400. This exact center point is 200 comma 200. That is where that center point will always be because it's relative to these two resolutions. Draw 200, 200, you mean here? Yeah, I already did that. Draw zero, zero where it should be here. I understand that. What I don't understand is that render copy EX, the function, already takes into account this is your starting point the only variable we're changing is the angle let's give the mouse is at 250 okay so it's at mouse point okay so it's not there it's it's 250 so it's going to be like here okay so mouse point is here what's up let's try to calculate the angle from 200 200 and 250 input If it's at a perfect line, well, its X value would be 200. Its Y value would be 350. Two hundred fifty is above the fruit. Oh, right. There. So it would be at point two hundred fifty. Now let's try to calculate the angle from two hundred, two hundred, and two hundred fifty input. Well, the angle would be zero, right? 
or sorry, it would be a 90 degree change. So this would rotate 90 degrees. Yes. So where we get that here? Radions are another unit to use to express angles, like centimeters versus inches. Oh. How do you get that? Well, you get that because... Oh, I know it's a 90 degree angle, unfortunately. You get it... Mm, because it's on the perfect radian, right? Or radian. It's on the perfect uh, 90 degree angle, right? Do the calculation. Fuck, I don't know how I calculate it. How do I calculate that? You see it with your eyes. The computers don't have eyes. I understand that, but I think you might be assuming I know more about math than I do. If, if the answer is anything to do with trigonometry, I'm going to be dis disappointing you, okay? If it's like a calculate the difference between this, 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 and this, then maybe I could do it. Oh, is it the difference between the center point and this point? So the difference here is these are the same. So it's zero. These are the difference. So it's minus 150. Is that how you'd find the 90 degree angle? Hmm. Just do the y distance over the x distance. So 350 divided by zero or 150 divided by zero. What? Is this like a 200 divided by 50 thing is like 25% and 25% of 360 is 90? Is that kind of what we're getting at here? No shot, right? Because this is the Y value, not the X value. That's the only thing I could find that would possibly equal 90 degrees. So are you saying, oh, oh shit. Okay. I get it. It's Y mouse parentheses. <laughs> we need to account for, okay. So the tangent of Y mouse minus, oh God, how do I express that in the program of the beginning point of 200? I guess I could just do it by hand. Minus 200. X mouse. Minus 200. Run. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, God. Oh, well, it rotated a little before it crashed. No, it's this. Oh, 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 shit. Something's happening. Hmm. What's up is pointing out there is a divide by zero error, I think, as well. Oh. Is that why it's crashing? Because we're dividing by zero like a moron? Um. If. Y mouse. Or if X mouse does not equal zero run this code Did that make the difference well it's not crashing anymore so that's good thank god okay no more crashing we're still getting our banana to wiggle a little but it's not quite there yet thank you by the way for pointing out the divide by zero thing so here's the deal let me try to understand here so Let's think about this. Why does it only rotate when it's only accounting for half the screen? In fact, it's at a diagonal, weirdly. So this angle through this half rotates nothing. But down here, it wiggles. I wonder why. Why had a diagonal of all fucking things? This is like the tangent issue? Oh no, wait, this is the angle. Wait a second. 
is that angle it's not a 45 degree angle is it oh my god it is a perfect 45 degree angle how did i get that That is so weird. Is the rotation in degrees or radians? I, I hope degrees, because I don't know what the fuck a radian is. Yeah, you need to convert. Convert what? Yeah, tangent does the exact same thing, actually, weirdly. So this formula only finds the radian of something. Okay, that is way outside of my wheelhouse. 360 degrees equals two pi radians. Holy shit. All right, hold on. This is where Google comes in. How to convert radian to degrees. I'm sorry. I thought radian was a degree. One radian to 57.2958 degrees. One rad equals 180 divided by pi. Okay angle is equal to this function divided by 100 or pi can i represent pi in this how the fuck do i represent pi in c plus plus okay pi c plus plus uh-huh 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 Use math to find, include math, m pi. Okay, based. Aha, m pi. All right. Divided by 180. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work. But holy shit, I hope it does. Oh my god, it's 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 giving itself a seizure. Oh, oh, wait, no, hold on. Hold on, I see what's going on. It's it's rotating very, very fast. It's rotating around an angle that isn't based on the center of the screen, but it is rotating around the bottom right of the screen weirdly what the fuck it's rotating around the bottom right of the screen at extremely fast rate should be 18 oh whoops sorry i was it was the inverse of tan all right does that fix it no in fact i still don't oh no it's still the same problem it's still rotating around the very bottom right of the screen, just very, very fast. Oh, see, see, it's rotating around the very bottom right of the screen. I wonder why you ignore the thing I told you to draw. Um, right now, I am in way over my head with math that I've never studied before. So right now I'm trying to chew through understanding math at the same time I'm trying, honestly, it's not even a C++ or programming thing I'm learning right now. It's just math, okay? Trust me, if there was a function called angle equals find the angle I want, <laughs> I would be using that. But we're using math right now. Oh, Y mouse and X mouse are instant. You need to convert to float first. Wait, what? How does that make a difference? No, in fact, it has to be an int because um, in order to get SDL get mouse state, they have to be int pointers. So I guess I could do like float. Float X mouse float is equal to X mouse. Float y mouse float is equal to y mouse and then have this equal to float 
this is equal to float. Flout? Float? Does that work? What? Okay, well, the floats did a lot of work here. Thank you. Holy shit. Wow, that is so smooth now. Okay, well, it is still rotating around an angle. So let's try to figure out, based on visuals, what's happening here. So, this is the exact center of where it's at. This is zero. If I rotate... It goes... Okay... So I'm, I'm, I, this is like, oh, wow. What a weird, what a weirdly smooth animation. It's almost hypnotizing. So this is, well, basically if I leave the screen, it doesn't even reset. So this is the perfect center right here. Interesting. It's only going to do half a turn because I never let mouse be zero, right? Oh no, that doesn't matter. That would just crash the program. Um, hmm. This is this because I'm getting no, the inverse tangent is correct, but I need to allow. Oh, my God. Why is the rotation angle so weird? It's like it's moving the whole texture, not moving from the texture. So why? Why is it doing that? Your mouse coordinates are coming from the top left corner of the window. You're only going to get 90 degrees of turning. Wait, what? Oh. Is that what's going on? I know chat was yelling at me to like figure that out. Oh, why is that happening? So is it X mouse float? Plus 200? No, that's not going to work. Fuck you. Oh, no, that fucked off to Narnia. Is it 200 minus? Nope, that fucked off to Narnia. So something, the flow is correct, but where are we getting the 200, 200 to like tell it it's in the center of the screen? Because I thought the center it was rotating around was up here with the center in the class. You want to rotate the banana from the center point of it? No. Yes, that is exactly what I want to do. If you want a full 360, change the center origin. So X mouse minus center. OK, here's what I don't understand, chat. Maybe you guys can explain this to me because I might just be an idiot. Is the issue this function then? Because we're we every frame we redraw the banana to account for the same center of rotation, but the angle is changing. So even if we change this, well, not change it, but you know what I mean. Basically, when we grab the X and Y float, so X mouse, you know, plus 200 or whatever we do. Uh, minus 200. Whatever we do, right? It's. Oh, that actually did something. Hold on. The fuck? Wait, was that the answer? Was it plus 200 plus 200? Oh, shit. Hold on. We have a little banana action here. This is now the center. Is it? Something has to do with this. Basically, 
I guess the problem here is that the mouse state is in fact the X and Y coordinates of the window that we're in. Okay, I understand that now. So I guess we have to account for that when we grab the angle, because the angle is the top left of the screen casting down to the mouse. My question is, I guess, why does the banana move? I, I would understand it if like the banana was in one place in the center right here, and it was just rotating all fucked up because it's based on the top left of the screen. What I don't understand is why the whole texture is moving. That throws me off. I legitimately don't know why. Because we've made the banana have a center point rotation of zero, zero. Did I fuck up where I put it? Texture make fruit zero, zero, which is the degree of change float zero, zero or double. Then the parameters, X resolution divided by two, Y resolution divided by two. So it's in the center of the screen. That is the center of the screen is the point of rotation. So why does the banana move? If you think about it logically, you need a center point. Your function didn't do anything other than X, Y. But the problem is, is that function doesn't need to do anything besides get an X and Y. That's that's literally all it does. That's that's all its purpose is. This whole thing is just find the angle, right? The angle then gets casted and it redefines fruit, uh, 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 not method, fuck, whatever, M angle. This M angle goes into render copy X, which already accounts for the center of the fruit, which is zero, zero, right? That's what this is for, this SDL point. That's what this screen resolution divided by two thing. That point should always be set at zero, zero. And at no point should that be moving. So I understand that grabbing the X and Y value is an issue right now because it's based on the top left of the screen. Okay, our rotation should be messed up, but what doesn't ex make any sense is that. I don't understand why the banana's moving. Like, I understand it's based around the top left of the screen. So like, this rotation is correct. This is doing everything we want it to do. I don't understand why it's all messed up. Why the banana's moving. That's that's what's throwing me off. The center point chat tells you is 200, 200. So they tell you to X minus 200, Y minus 200. Have you tried that? Yes. We have indeed tried this. So if we do this again. Well. Uh, I mean, it's, it's rotating correctly, sorta. I mean, it's not accounting for negative numbers, I don't think, but it is rotating somewhere. But again, we have the same issue. Is it because I defined the class wrong, you think? I'm not mad, by the way. This is fun. I enjoy this. I don't know if anyone here enjoys it, but I enjoy it. Oh no, it is based around the center. Wait, no, it is correct. Look, it's like as we approach the center, like it gets more extreme in the movement. It is based around point zero zero. The fuck? This is indeed where it's doing, but it's the point is messed up now. Wait, did I fuck up? Can you get it to draw where it thinks the center banana is? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I could just do it manually and just Instead of uh, M dot center, just have it be. Um, no, that's exactly what I want it to be. It's just this point. I mean, I guess I could just make a point called SDL point point and just make it center screen and just define it as uh, 200 200. And just call that and then um, why do you need? Wait, you need two values. You're an SDL point. 
Oh, it's a pointer. That's why I fucked up. Okay, now we do, instead of center, we have center screen. That's the only thing we changed. Or the address of center screen. Go. Still the same problem. What the fuck? You need to specify where the center point of banana JPEG is somehow, but we've already done that. Right? We've already defined this render copy X function, by the way, let me zoom out a little here. This render copy X function requires you as one of its parameters to center a pointer to a point indicating the point around which this rectangle will be rotated. If no, rotation will be done around that divided by two, that divided by two. Wait. Oh, it's because I have a null rectangle. Wait, what the fuck? Hold on. Is that the issue? Address of render rect controlled. Oh, fuck, it's the same issue. God damn it. Hmm. What is the district and center you pass to SDL render copy X? Well, the rectangle that we have as in uh, district, which is the uh, destination rectangle or null for the entire rendering target, that is a uh, render rectangle controlled, which is this. That is my district. For null, I have, you know, null. I guess I could define banana to have um, a parameter and then have that parameter be render copy X the rectangle. Is that the issue? I always like to draw centers and edges in red or something for debug purposes. Oh, you know what, Master Snoods? You probably had the right idea. Also, hi, I haven't seen you here before. Can you give it some new line for us to see? Too long, we can't see render rec control. Oh, sorry. There, is that better? It's kind of huge, but there. This is the rectangle. No, it's not, I lied. This is the rectangle. You see the whole thing? Yes, you do. Zoom in would help. Now it's tiny. Oh, God. Okay. SDL render rectangle. Here, you know what? I'll guide you through this chat. Fuck, I don't want to move the whole thing. Okay, so. There. Fuck, I still don't see it. Hold on, control Z. Okay. Um, Don't insert, please. Don't insert, please. Do not insert, please. What the fuck? Okay, enter. Uh, Enter. There. Uh, here, you know what? I'll enter around every comma. So, comma one, comma two, comma three. There, there's your formula. That's our whole rectangle. Now, obviously, we could do something simple and just divide by three, but whatever. We made it complicated on purpose. new line at 39 no that is the end of the line this comma is it that that's the last every every line is its own parameter so uh x value y value width height are you saying this there you go no that is the rectangle there's no issues with that the only thing here is just like the size of the banana that's the only thing this does right there's no point here hmm. yeah that's not gonna make a difference yeah this is just divide by three i am very aware of that okay i understand that but still so let me just think about something down here real quick. Hold on, does that run? Okay. If I went to this parameter here, they said if I didn't have a center or null it, it would be zero, zero. 
Let's try that. Or not zero, zero, center screen. Oh my God, that worked. What? So the center point would be screen resolution divided by four divided by two. I have no idea. I legitimately do not understand what I did. We, we did it. I mean, it, we did what I set out to do today. What center point you passed into render copy X? All I did was pass this, which is defined here. So you're saying instead of screen resolution divided by two, I should have done divided by four divided by two divided by four divided by two. And that would have solved the problem. No, it didn't get fucked. But if we pass this as a null pointer, which defaults to the center of the screen, it does work. I have absolutely no explanation for this. The center point is relative to the top left coordinate of that rectangle. Okay. Oh my God. I don't even know, chat. It is the center point. This is what we wanted the whole time. I have no idea. Also, Arco, hello. I have no idea why this works. Also, it's not really working either. This is kind of flipping the image. So I guess we do want, um, if root dot M underscore angle is equal to 180 or root dot M underscore angle is equal to 270. Run this function. Um, fruit dot. What was it called? M flip. Is going to be equal to SDL flip horizontally. Okay. Does that work? Well, it flipped horizontally, but not vertically. Vertically. That didn't work. Why? Flip vertical? There we go. Oh, well, it's trying. <laughs> it's trying to do something. It does flip, but it doesn't like that zero value very much, huh? Hmm. We call this pivot point in 3D. Pivot points are important when it comes to rotation. So your rotation was around uh, rectangle X plus your rectangle Y. Okay, so when we fucked around with that rectangle, we fucked around with the rotation. I got you. I dig you're taking the time to figure out math versus just going straight to the math function will definitely help your overall understanding. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry for people here who don't understand. I'm not actually frustrated. This is fun. I like this. This is problem solving because the only time I've ever frustrated is when I need to understand math that because I dropped out of college, I don't understand. Like I never took trigonometry. I understood like I took pre-calc. Like I, I know that I know Sokatoa or I remember the concept at least. But like anything beyond that is just foreign to me. I've never explored that far. So when you guys are talking about some math concepts, I didn't understand it. Um, that's the only time I'm ever frustrated. So if I sound angry, I'm not actually angry. I'm having fun. It's just I don't know how frustrating it is for you guys. Especially what's up. He's doing a lot here. Uh, also, thank you, Snoots. The range of A10 has width of pi. The range of A10 too has width of two pi. There's a second tangent? They made a fucking sequel? Wait, does that work? That doesn't... That's not gonna work. Yeah, fuck you. Wait, what does just regular tangent do? It does the exact same thing. Based. Or, you know what? It doesn't do the exact same thing. It's pointing backwards, isn't it? 
Yeah, because this is the 180 degree angle. Whereas if I had inverse of tangent, now this is, no, it is pointing the same way. Interesting. Master Stoons is following. Thank you. Yeah, Yara, I understand a little more now. And you subscribed. Holy shit. Based. Thank you. Wow. Uh, hi. What kind of programming do you do? Thank you for subscribing. That's so nice of you. <laughs> That's going to pay for DoorDash tomorrow. <laughs> or part of it. Gary, don't use your money on DoorDash. Save it for your student loan. Hey. All right. Sometimes you got to live life a little, you know? Uh, inverse tangent 2 takes the uh, y and x as separate arguments. It takes two arguments, hence two in the name. You have to give it y and x as separate arguments? Why? So a tan 2, instead of divide... Wait, what? x and y. Oh, so it's this whole thing but negative? So put this whole thing around a parentheses, put a comma after it, put another parentheses, that. It froze. Oh God, it's twitching. Hmm. Oh, I never put the negative. Oh, shit. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, comma instead of a slash. No, replace slash with comma. What? So delete all that shit. A tan two. Replace the divide with a comma? The fuck? Well, we have now successfully made the program we set out to make three hours ago. Rotate the goddamn banana. How? Why? How does... How does... How do we go from dividing something... Wait, now I don't need the negative zero anymore, right? Now this works? Is this gonna crash? Now we don't need the zero anymore because it never, oh my God, that makes so much more sense now. A little. Okay. Y divided by X is equal to negative Y divided by negative X. So the uh, inverse tangent cannot distinguish between top left and bottom right. A tan 2 can distinguish because it gets Y and X before that info is lost. So the inverse tangent 2 function divides in the function. And all I'm defining is the left and right parameters of that function. Okay. Right now, I'm working on making emulators in Zig for old gaming systems. Dude, we got a lot of Zig users here based. Um, okay, now you don't need the zero check either. Yeah, yeah, I already figured that out. Yeah, it doesn't need it because I'm assuming it already knows it's going to be dividing. And so it would already account for a case zero. I'm assuming that's why. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it already divides, but yeah, we don't need the if this is equal to zero. It always accounts for that. Yep, no crash. So it, it already accounts for zero as a case. I'm trying to find the angle it would, but I guess the difference between 179.9 and, you know, or I guess the difference between 360 and 0 0.01 is like nothing, right? Sick. Well, there you go. We now have a banana on rotate. And now, because of the way we program this, we could actually go up here. This doesn't have to be banana. This can be, you know, apple. It's that easy. Look at that. Look at that. What do you call that? Decoupling or whatever? Based. Now we have an apple. And now we have a... Uh, animation test.png 
And there's our little dude. Oh, but you guys don't even see. Oh, baby. Easy peasy. Yeah, ATAN2 does ATAN internally, fixing up the angle based on the sign of Y and X and checks before FX is zero. Aha, gotcha. Wow. Now, chat, what function should I have called to figure out all that shit for me? Also, what does this do? If no return value targets, Y divided by X. Oh my God, there's so much math in here. If X and Y are both zero, domain error does not occur. If Y is zero, pull error does not, pull error does not occur. Okay, sweet. It even counts for unlimited. Oh, interesting. You can have unlimited concepts in programming? Or infinite? So if X is infinite and Y is finite and positive, zero is returned. Huh. If either X is nondescript or Y is nondescript, nondescript is returned. Okay. And a tan yx is equal to c a r g x plus y time i times y. The fuck? Hmm. Wow, learn something every day. Not a number, not a script. Yeah, I got the idea. Now move the banana to somewhere that is not the center of the screen. Listen, those are fighting words, okay? Here, we'll do this. We'll make it nice and easy okay we're just going to define this goddamn rectangle as a really simple number of just y divided by two that's it that's all we're gonna do and then everything else is the same okay based and now instead of null pointer it's gonna be uh render rect controlled uh the address of it doesn't work because oh i have the wrong point oh god oh god oh jesus we don't need the rectangle fixed we need um well, I did it. <laughs> oh no, that's that's referencing the center. Hold on, we need the banana back. Did I just do it? I may have actually done it just accidentally here. Um, the center point needs to be uh, fruit dot m uh, center. Now this will work. Um, never mind. M center. Wait, what? Is that comic code dyslexia friendly fonts? What? Based? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Commodore. No, it's I don't know what code. It's I like this font though. Why does this not work? No suitable conversion from SDL point to constant SDL point. I'm not calling the constant. I'm calling this, which is equal to the constant. What? No suitable conversion function from SDL point to constant SDL point exists. What? Fine, we won't make a constant. Fuck you. Oh, it needs the address? Oh, that works. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Listen, chat, we've had a long stream, okay? All I wanted to do was rotate the goddamn banana, and we're just going into, like, goddamn Narnia. Okay, today's... Okay, we're done today. All right, we're cool. Tomorrow, we are doing... Um... What are we doing tomorrow? True type fonts. Oh, that can't be frustrating. Chat's getting all uppity about fonts and shit. You guys 
are gonna go crazy over this all right anyway that's gonna be tomorrow it's gonna be a blast we learned a lot today we learned so much math and so much interesting info holy shit man i need to brush up on my math huh hold on we need a new background um gimme 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 miku who doesn't like miku all right just ban the word font and chat math not even once well done today thank you i appreciate it okay have a good night have a good evening we're gonna stream tomorrow every single day baby every day we're learning programming okay all right chat what are you hiding in the corner for come down here get down here chat all right come here thank you for having patience with me today i learned a lot about trigonometry never doing it again we'll download that shit online like every other programmer seems to do have a good night have a good evening. goodbye look oh chat you're tasting you taste uh you taste kind of you taste good all right chat see you later goodbye